Resource Group. Um, at this time, would you please join with me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, let's take attendance at this time. You just tell me if you're present or not. Michelle Gentine. Present. Lisa Merrick. Okay. Um, Abby Block. Here. Michelle Warner. Here. Ready, Ackley? Here. Nicole Bredesen? Uh, Mike Heimbach, present. Kate Hodges? Christine Potter? Christine is here. Gretchen Hudson? Kevin Post, Laura Bircham, uh, that's it, did I miss anyone? Now well, let's proceed. Uh, next item on the agenda is the approval of the February 24th uh, meeting. Do I have a motion to approve those minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Uh, next is our public forum, but I do not see anyone here. So we'll proceed to our discussion. Uh, first item under discussion is the community-wide survey discuss any updates, outstanding questions surrounding the rollout of the survey. Any news on our survey? So I talked to the other members of the Humane Society and we would like to add two questions to the shelter and rescue area of the survey, if we can. And that was the, one of them is, are there additional services that the Humane Society could be offering to better serve our community? And the second one is, are you aware that the Humane Society is not funded by taxpayer dollars and relies on donations to operate? So that's okay with everyone. Are there any objections to that? I think we're good then. Thank you, Michelle. Thanks, Michelle. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next item for discussion is uh, recent dog-related incidents and the public perception of pet ownership. So I guess I put this on the agenda. I don't know how many of you are active on next door, um, but there's been a lot of recent activity in terms of, um, let's say, complaints surrounding dogs off leash, dogs in parks. There was an incident with another dog being off leash and uh, attacking a smaller dog that died of its injuries. Um, and I don't know what the community, if we have a role in, in that and educating or letting people know that this exists. Um, and again, with the ordinances, what that maybe looks like, but I thought maybe for discussion, see what people think or how we can be contributing to connect tourism better. Anyone like to uh, share your viewpoint on that? I know for myself, since I read about both of those incidents, um, when we walk our dogs, I've become more vigilant just because I don't want to have any kind of surprise uh, attacking us. And we've actually gone to the step now of buying some pepper spray 
and bringing that along with us when we take our dogs for walks. Um, it is a huge concern in our household. But I do think that, uh, you know, the public needs to know that we have some ordinances in place and, you know, they, they have been enforced and dogs have been removed from some of their owners uh, because they haven't complied and, and they haven't controlled their dogs. So we want them to know that if there is a problem, they need to report it and, uh, and we'll deal with it. So I guess my question about that is, you know, is that the role of everybody on the committee to be voicing that and letting people know, you know, about this task group and responsible pet ownership and how that looks um, or like where does that fall, I guess, and, you know, when it comes to like Evergreen, I know there was a lot of pretty long discussion about Evergreen Park and dogs in the park and um, I haven't commented just because I wasn't sure if I should or how that looks um, or whose responsibility it is, I guess. Well, I, I think, you know, there's there's some I have options a to go ahead. Um, I just was wondering whether this is some, something that could be done with like a citywide newsletter or something that is in can be maybe uh, published in like the sun or, you know, something that people in the community will will see and acknowledge. Well, Christine, thanks for that suggestion. I was just going to mention that our, our new letter, the newsletter will be coming out tomorrow and uh, we'll see if we can still uh, get an article on that in. If not, we'll follow up uh, with it the following month. But that would be an easy way to do it. And uh, we also can post into Nextdoor as a city. So we could post it in so the people that are being involved in these other conversations would be more aware of the, uh, the dangerous dog ordinance. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Christine. Anyone else? I have, have, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I, was, I would add too, I think it's always helpful. So this is a huge concern of mine. My dog was attacked by an off-leash dog, not in Sheboygan, but elsewhere. Um, so I am always hyper vigilant about this. Um, and, and I still go back to like what, when we do the education, which I think is important, what options are we offering folks? Because again, like if we just say, can't do it, here's the ordi ordinance, you know, you're going to get in trouble. Like how can we instead like educate that there are dog parks or educate so that people have somewhere to go? Um, that's not going to hundred percent take care of the problem. I understand that, but I do think that that can take care of some of the problem when you present um, a solution as well. Yeah, and I guess that's partly, you know, where I was hoping this conversation would go. You know, we've been talking about ordinance um, and specific to the parks, and I know uh, Joe is looking for the committee's feedback, you know, recommendations that he can make. Um, so I guess just kind of taking all that into account um, and just trying to have a conversation about it. I just wanted to say that I think that sometimes people do not react very well when it's a punitive response, but rather, like Michelle said, with the education part of it, that may help people understand a bit better, um, you know, by showing them the areas that they can go, they may be able to take better opportunities of those offerings. So, you know, I think Michelle came up with a wonderful idea. So thank you. What if, like, maybe, what, like a map, perhaps? A very clear map? These are all wonderful ideas. Thank you for your input so far. Anyone else have something they'd like to share about this idea? Um, I, I would just add in the name of Abby saying, you know, let's have conversation. I would agree with that because I think the conversations we're having here about potentially opening up additional park space, right? People tend to be either or and, you know, okay, my dog really can't go anywhere in a park, so I'm going to go to the complete end of the spectrum and my dog's going everywhere and not on leash, right? So I, I do think that just the existence of this task force helps because right now maybe we only have, you know, the dog park to offer them. But if we can have some of this thoughtful conversation about opening some additional spaces and not going too far, but offering some alternatives, the more alternatives 
we offer people, I think the more they are inclined to meet us in the middle. Again, never going to be 100%. There are always going to be people who don't, but more people will try to do the right thing when given convenient options to do so that are also safer for the community. Yeah, thanks, Michelle. I really appreciate the idea of a positive reinforcement of what we're trying to uh, have take place here in Sheboygan. So I, I, I just I have want one to... more suggestion. Oops, sorry. No, I just wanted to say, you know, uh, up until this point, um, I want to say education has to be part of this because up until this point, it's you know signs. You got your 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 city um, city ordinances, and basically the people left trying to enforce it are the police officers. And we all know police officers can't be everywhere. So you know, especially Evergreen Park when it when it when the roads closed, you know they they can't even just jump in there and drive around um, because it's literally locked up. Um, but you see it everywhere. I mean, there, there's so much of it, it's gonna take a lot of different types of education. Uh, there's hardly a time that I drive de by the land where they're not on the beach walking. Um, and, and you know, they're in Evergreen Park. And, and is, you know, at this point, is on the leash in Evergreen Park when it's closed, is that such a bad thing? Maybe, maybe not. You know, right now it's against the ordinance. Um, so it's gotta be more than what we're doing now. So uh, anything we can do, social media, um, newsletters, papers, I, I, I think it really needs to be hit pretty hard and, and a couple times a year. Yeah. So I guess around that, you know, my, part of my question is, you know, as, as committee members, do we have the license to use that to help educate people? Can we say that there's a task group working on these issues and ask for feedback? Like, where is our role in that? And, um, you know, is that just something that we all share? And if you're an example, you, you know, do something with it? Or does it have to be more central message? Or I'm not sure. I like, I, I like that. Um, I was wondering, and I mentioned the newsletter. I mean, would it be possible for a few, a, a few people in the task force perhaps to get together and work on a newsletter that could go out like a, at least maybe a few times a year, maybe initially just letting people know that we're working on these issues, maybe get some feedback from people. Another avenue I was going to ask the mayor about was could we maybe bring this up during the neighborhood or mayor's neighborhood leadership cabinet meetings, um, get that information out to the neighborhood association so that they in turn can turn it over to residents and let people know what we're working on. I think that would be fine and we have uh, one coming up uh, early this next month uh, at Qantas Park so we could add that to the agenda. Terrific, thank you. And then, and then I just want to add to that that maybe we need to come up with something very specific that to pre to present in that way, so that we're not just kind of throwing ideas out. Or I wonder if that can almost be like a collaboration with the Humane Society in terms of there's different aspects that are all related to owning a pet in the city. And you know, here's places you can go, here's activities you can do, here's a shelter dog that you can keep her. I mean, I don't know what that looks like, but. Yeah, I like the idea of a, uh, a conventional script that everybody would follow. So it's not just, okay, this, that, or the other thing, and it might get people confused, so. Yeah, because even leash law, there's a lot of confusion of whether or not a leash law exists in the city or not. Half of the people say there is and half say no. So when, when somebody adopts an animal from the Humane Society, we give them a packet of information. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if we had like a one-page flyer, you know, we could certainly include that. That just kind of gave you the, the rules, the laws, the ordinances. Um, I don't know if we do anything. I haven't seen that packet lately. I mean, I can double check if there's anything in there currently and let you know. But we'd certainly be willing to do that in the future. Thanks, Michelle. Because I think some people just don't know. I wonder if you could almost do like a, 
similar to a good citizenship class with tests. And I don't know how you incentivize that to get people to participate, but um, just like a short primer on here's what the city laws are, and here's where you can go, and here's what can happen if you don't uh, follow that. Like I said, it just seems like a really... What about... Oh, go ahead. Um, I was just thinking, what about like the um, the Sheboygan Dog Club, the Sheboygan AKC? Um, you know, they also could either help with or at least distribute information to their members. Um, if we could be put together, I don't know if I mean I, you know, I've never done anything like this before, but I question um, making it like that a connected with the society thing because not everybody gets their pets from the humane society and so maybe like all any organizations where pets are are bought or sold or even when like the humane society goes to say i don't know pet supplies plus is coming in i don't know pet stores could have these flyers as well um but it seems like it should be kind of like a avoiding like a, a for all residents of Sheboygan who own pets. I'm a repeat adopter from this shelter and that's the only place I get my animals. And I can tell you the last one that I adopted was in April of 2020. And the packet that you guys give has like a sheet that has all of the veterinarians that are in the area. So I think that putting in a sheet about here are the leash laws when you're adopting your animal, it would be a great idea. Um, that way people understand what the rules are before they are, you know, you know, when they finalize their adoption. I mean, even though I've adopted many animals through there, I still always read my welcome package because there might be something new every time. So, you know, I think that through that way, it would be a great idea if we could have just like a little fact sheet or something to give people and maybe um, with the adoption counselors that they would be able to just go over that list and say, here, just so you know, we have this list and these are some of the rules in the city just so that you can prevent any issues for your new adoptee. And I think so when, oh, go ahead, Michelle. when we move into our new building and we have a nice community room, then we're hoping to get into um, some more like educational classes for the community. And one of our ideas was to have a, you know, for a kid who wants to adopt a dog or is begging his parents for an animal that we would have like a, a Good, good citizenship class that the kid could learn, like the responsibilities of having an animal. And, you know, maybe that's something we could introduce in there as well. You can't just let your dog run free and those subjects. But that's in the future. But that's another great example of how we need to approach this problem from a variety of, uh, not problem, but opportunity from a variety of perspectives. Um, some people just aren't going to read whatever is given to them. Some people feel uncomfortable about going to meetings, but the more options that we have for people, the more likelihood they're going to get something from us. So yeah. we got some work to do. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? So I guess I would just ask where we go from here with all of this. Um, like where, you know, if we're, we're on next door, we're talking to somebody and there's questions about what the ordinance is or there's um, all this discussion about uh, an incident happening, happening. Are we, as committee members, like how are we responding to that or are we or in the meantime, I, I guess? I think like we uh, did our subcommittees, anybody would like, like to sit down and, and really put some thought into this. Um, I don't think it'd be many meetings, but you know, because there are a lot of different ways of, of advertising this, um, make a list, uh, flyers and, and um, you know, a, a few people sitting down and really um, working on it can go a long way and bring it back to the committee. I will volunteer to do that. I'd like to be a part of it. I will volunteer to do that. I would too. 
So we have four people that would like to do that. Anyone else like to uh, join that group? I think hopefully uh, maybe one of us could reach out to Kevin on the PD and try to get one of them on that too. I can do that after this meeting. Okay. Great stuff. Anyone else? Well, uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, just the announcement of our next meeting date, which is Wednesday, April 28th. And uh, can I just say really quickly, so Scott was nice enough to do a recurring invite for that. So everybody should have meetings through the end of the year um, and a little bit beyond that. But if you didn't get it for some reason, if you want to let me know, I'll resend it to you. But it'll be the uh, same credential information um, should be on your calendars now moving forward. And I think, well, one other thing about that, if uh, for some reason folks are now feeling like they need to step back from attending our meetings, uh, feel free to let us know. Uh, there's no, you know, oh my goodness gracious, no uh, cost involved in that. So if that's an uncomfortability, if you need to move in other directions, just let us know. Okay, I'd like to, uh, let's make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. I'll second. I'll second. <laughs> Thank you all for your attendance and your great input. And uh, happy Easter coming up. Thank you, Mike. Happy Easter. Happy spring. <laughs> Whenever that comes back.